urgent action being taken to fix the shortage of critical medical supplies at the QEH. That's our top story in our Barbados Today Morning News Update for Tuesday, April the 24th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. Health authorities here are taking urgent steps to address a shortage of critical medical supplies at the state-run Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Chief Executive Officer Dr. Dexter James told Barbados Today last night that management was trying to secure supplies from sources other than the current ones. I do know we're we taking steps to try to get the drugs that are not available in the country from other sources and uh, we'll, we'll advise in, in due course. What about the surgery? Well, this is what I said. We are on urgencies and emergencies to ensure that whatever stocks that we have, we keep those for those. Elective surgeries are non-emergencies. Okay. I thought I was clear enough. Elective surgeries are non-emergencies, and if you have limited supplies, then you, keep, you, you, you retain those for urgencies and emergencies. While emphasizing that only emergency surgeries would be carried out, Dr. James confirmed that the shortage was largely due to the hospital owing suppliers, given the slow release of money from government, made worse by the scarcity of some critical pharmaceuticals worldwide. A social activist in Barbados that's leading a campaign against the UK over its treatment of local and other Caribbean immigrants has welcomed the latest development in the so-called Windrush Generation controversy. Yesterday, the UK government announced that all members of that generation and their children are to be offered full British citizenship without delay. Home Secretary Amber Rudd announced the deal as part of a sweeping package of compensation and new citizenship rights for Caribbean immigrants who were facing deportation. The package would include a fast-track procedure for people who went to Britain from the late 1940s to the 1970s to gain citizenship and be entitled to a UK passport. But last night, while welcoming the development, social activist and attorney at law David Comichon, he is still insisting that CARICOM must take a united stand to ensure that all Barbadian and other Caribbean immigrants get their just reward. I think it's not something really for individual Car Caribbean governments. I think they should be seen as Caribbean kith and kin, and therefore, um, CARICOM should seek to stand with them, to support them, and to be prepared to use its um, diplomatic offices to engage with the British government um, in, in an effort to ensure that, that they get what is due to them. It was a sorrowful and a shocking start to the day yesterday for Cheryl Archer of Bibby's Lane, St. Michael. The 57-year-old mother's worst fears became a nightmarish reality yesterday morning when she was called in by police to identify the partially decomposed body of her 18-year-old son, Ricardo Archer, at his 3rd Avenue Bibby's Lane, St. Michael home. The sight of her son's bloody body left Archer wondering just what had happened to Ricardo, whom she said was a very quiet person who just had his ways. Ricardo is a very quiet person. Mm -hmm. He don't interfere in the body. He's trying to keep himself out of trouble. Right now, if I tell you how I feel, I feel very, very, very done. I may be walking in strength, but I'm not 100% right now. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. The St. Lucia government is pushing ahead with an election promise to decriminalize marijuana. 
speaking during a march on the streets of Soufri by proponents of the decriminalization of ganja, the Minister of Home Affairs gave the assurance that there will be no turning back, and he wants the opposition to join the government. Well, I made a promise on the, on the campaign trail that um, my government will be looking into the regularization of the marijuana. Um, I have seen the effects that it has on young people, the criminalization of young persons, and I decided that we were going to do something about it. So I have made that promise, and my presence here today is just to solidify the fact that I am working assiduously towards decriminalizing the marijuana. So to try my very best to make sure that I can deal with my, my colleagues and the leaders of the opposition so that we, as a joint um, decision, that we can do that. And on the international scene, former President George H.W. Bush, who just buried his wife, First Lady Barbara Bush, on Saturday, is in intensive care. He was admitted to the Houston Methodist Hospital Sunday morning. More in this story from the CNN. We have been told that he was suffering from an infection that led to sepsis, which can be life-threatening, that he was admitted to the ICU at Houston Methodist yesterday, and that, unfortunately, he has been struggling. Uh, we were told that he was in very serious condition. I assume if he's in the ICU that it was critical condition. We were told that his blood pressure kept dropping and that a couple of times there was serious, serious concern about whether he was going to pull through. And uh, that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.